Yes, uh, good morning all of you. Then uh, in continuation to the previous classes, uh, we will be discussing the important characteristic features of various orders. But however, in the previous classes, we have uh, actually discussed about the hemimetabola or the exoterigota orders. And from this class onwards, we are going to discuss the important characteristic features of the insects coming under the holometabora in which you find the egg, larva, pupa and adult stage. So uh, today onwards so we are uh, covering all these uh, important orders. They are extremely important economically and uh, as far as the agriculture is concerned they are extremely important to understand. And today we will start with uh, the order Neuroptera and uh, Yes, as I told you that uh, from today onwards, we'll be discussing about the important characteristic features of the insects coming under uh, endotericota. Endotericota or holometabola, they are synonyms. And the holometabola, you always see the egg, larva, pupa, and adult stage. We call them as endotericota because the wings are developed inside the pupa. Inside the pupa, that's the reason. We call them as endotergoids. And you can see in this picture here, these are the commonly seen insects. These are the commonly seen insects as far as the endotergota or the holometabolase. And the butterflies and moths and the beetles. The beetles also come under this. The first one is Neuroptera. Neuroptera means neuro means nerve like, optera means wings, uh, wings with neck like patterns of wings wings with net like patterns of wings so they are transparent and you can very clearly see the wing venation and uh, they look like a net so all these insects with this kind of arrangement of wings and wing venation they come under neuroptera and uh, commonly uh, we call them as a lace wings because the wings are like a uh, like looking like a lace ones so we call them as a lace wings and generally, we also call them as aphid lions, ant lions. Aphid lions means they are lions on the aphids. It means they eat aphids. The, their food is actually aphids. And ant lions means their food is actually ants. And uh, the common names also like adder flies and snake flies. Aphid lions and ant lions are very commonly seen. Aphid lions you can see in the field. But the ant lions you can see at your home. And if you go into the new building which is coming up in the campus and also just opposite our entomology department, you try to find some kind of patterns and you can identify this picture with this picture shows very clearly, yes. So this kind of patterns you will see on the floor. This kind of, if you actually hear the wonderful arrangement so when the ant is slowly going, it fell down, it falls down, and here there is a larva actually inside. So that larva, this kind of larva is inside, and this larva will have a wonderful mandibles and they will catch hold of the ants. So ant is the food for them. So these things are called ant lines, ant lines because, and these things are called aphid lines because you can see here in this picture that they, it's this, this larva is actually catching the aphids. Larvae is actually catching the aphids and they eat the aphids and this is the adult. Both the adults of uh, aphid lions and ant lions, you can see the wings, they are, uh, uh, they are nectar like arrangement. That's the reason we call them as neuropterans. And another interesting thing is here, these aphid lions also, they have a wonderful eggs with stalks. Just go back to the, I think two months back, we had a discussion about the malfusion tubules, the malfusion tubule secretions. They actually produce the stock as far as the aphid lines are concerned. Yes, so we call them as aphid lines or ant lines and ant lines also are called as a doodle bugs. These ones we commonly called as a doodle bugs. They form spits in the dry and dusty soil and these spits you can find in our college very commonly everywhere. 
uh, in the new building and your nearby your hostel and just try to uh, just dig it with a, a small a piece of uh, wooden piece or even with your hands and try to find this larvae. It's very commonly seen. So the adult uh, green lace wings and these are we call them as a like green lace wings green lace wings and these green lace wings uh, are very very important economically for us and the entomologists they rare these insects in a huge numbers and uh, we release these adults in the fields and these adults will go and lay the eggs and the plants and the larvae which is coming out of this egg they they keep on eating the aphids so they are extremely useful very useful we call in telugu we call them as a allika rekkala purugulu allika rekkala purugulu ante rekkalo allika chesinattu ga untayi kabatti net laaga untayi kabatti allika rekka purugulu antam so these uh, uh, these uh, insects will be rare them in a huge numbers and release in the fields so that they eat all the small insects and especially the aphids they like aphids like anything and they have a two pairs of similar membranous wings and uh, both fore wing and also hind wings they have a, a complex kind of structure like net like patterns of wings they are very fragile and weak insects actually they are very fragile and they are very weak flyer they don't fly very very long distances and this if uh, ant lions the doodle bugs so you must be observing these doodle bugs in your room and uh, the antenna is fully formed uh, the antenna is fully formed uh, with uh, the without terminal uh, club and you can see the larvae here the larvae will have a very well well developed mandibles so both the ant lions and also aphid lions the larvae will have a very strong mandibles and these strong mandibles are used for catching the prey and also for cutting the prey and the eggs are actually mounted on stalks you can see here beautiful actually the very small eggs they are mounted on the stalks this is a very very characteristic feature of the neuropterans and the larvae will spin into cocoons and uh, in the silken cocoon the adults getting developed and the family the most important family for us as agricultural scientists agricultural graduates most important family for us to understand is chrysopidae the chrysoperla carnia is a very very important very very commonly found green lace wing and this green green lace wing is uh, pro actually multiplied in huge numbers by the laboratories and uh, they release these green lace wings in the fields they release in the these green lace wings in the fields and with this uh, we have completed the neuroptera then we will enter into the lepidoptera very very important and uh, very commonly seen lepido means scales lepido means scales tera means winged insects the wings of these insects coming under the order lepidoptera will have a scales if you touch the butterfly if you touch any moth then you will feel that many number of scales are being attached to our fingers so the butterflies and moths the butterflies and moths we call them as a butterflies and moths they are commonly so the butterflies are very very beautiful brightly colored and you feel very happy you see these butterflies in our gardens the moths of course generally they are in dull colored but of course some of the moths are also uh, very bright colored ones but generally the butterflies are they have a wonderful and brightly colored wings and the scales especially the scales are very very brightly colored as far as the moths are concerned the moths scales are not brightly colored but of course in some moths they are very good and you can see the structure of the body here the head thorax and abdomen uh it's not very very stock but as far as the moths are concerned you can see the big structure the big thoracic region and also abdominal region the stout ones they are very very stout 
So the uh, habitat is uh, terrestrial and mostly terrestrial and uh, they are highly polyphagous, very important. That is the reason we focus more time on learning the important characters of the insects coming under the order Lepidoptera because they are highly polyphagous. So they are extremely important for us to understand because they cause serious, very, very serious damage to our crops. The size is medium to large and the head relatively very small both in case of moths and also butterflies you can see the head so relatively small head uh, but uh, with uh, a kind of neck structure so that the head can be moved freely the compound eyes relatively large you can see the compound eyes are, are very large relatively large and they have two ocelline numbers the antenna is many segmented and variable in size, but generally you can see the antenna with hook. Antenna with a hook, but in some it's very, very long also. So many segmented and the antenna with the hook and some. The mouth parts are siphoning type in adults. You can see the siphoning type in adults. It's actually, uh, it is uh, a long coil. It's a long coil. Uh, proboscis which is formed because of galea of maxilla. This uh, in detail we learn when we have a class on mouth parts. Uh, and as far as the larvae is concerned, they have a chewing and biting kinds of mouth parts. The adults will have a siphoning type mouth parts. All the adults, both in masterpiece, butterflies and moths, the adults will have a siphoning type of mouth parts, whereas the larva will have a chewing and biting type. All, all larvae will have a chewing and biting type of mouth parts. Wings, yes. So they have two pairs of wings and two pairs of membranous wings, uh, which is uh, covered with the scales, giving beautiful color patterns. You can see what's so nice, very, very beautiful. So whether it's a moth or butterfly, they have beautiful scales. Uh, four wings are usually bigger in size, you can see here this, the four wings are uh, bigger in size and uh, they have a very bigger span compared to the hind wings. And both the four wings and the hind wings that are membranous with many number of scales are beautiful colorful scales. But the four wings are little bigger in size and they have a, uh, a longer uh, wing span actually. And in males of uh, some of these insects, uh, they have a uh, different kind of scales and these scales are called as androconia. And this androconia is actually, they serve as a, some kind of glands. So these glands are useful for basically to avoid the enemies. They, they actually emit some kind of smell so that their enemies is uh, avoided. Enemies will get away after uh, swelling this. And the wing coupling mechanism is frenulum and retinoculum type and also amplexiform. Generally, the frenulum and retinoculum type of wing coupling mechanism is present in all the moths and amplexiform wing coupling mechanism is present in the butterflies. Then uh, we will uh, try to learn about the larva. So larva, we call them as a caterpillars. Caterpillars are nothing but eating machines. It means, just imagine, they eat the plant material, they eat the fruit material, they eat the stems, they eat anything like machines. It means they are very, very dangerous, very, very dangerous to the agriculture. So they are usually erosive farm and uh, mostly phytophagus except one or two but all these caterpillars are phytophagus they eat food like anything they eat plant material like anything they are very very serious pests of the that is the reason we focus a lot on lepidoptera the larvae have well developed head they, 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 they have a well developed head and they have a very very well developed mandibulate mouth parts chewing and biting kind of mouth parts so they have a uh, one in some insects actually, and uh, they have labium with a spinneret, which is useful for spinning the cocoon, spinning the silk mist's cocoon. 
you can see the thoracic uh, segments and uh, all these uh, thoracic segments three thoracic segments in all kinds of larvae they have a segmented legs that is the reason we call them as a true legs the two legs in the thoracic region are segmented because they are segmented we call them as a true legs so three pairs of one in pre prothoracic mesothoracic and metathoracic so they they are always having three pairs of segmented legs in thoracic region one in each thoracic region and they we call them as a true legs and of course they also have pro legs a false legs a fleshy legs these false legs are usually on third fourth fifth sixth and tenth abdominal segments they are usually five but sometimes they are absent like you can see here you can see here the semi lupus and lupus so this is a semi lupus this is a lupus so they have a big loop that is because so they don't have a third fourth and fifth abdominal segment legs only sixth and the last one so in the loop one they don't have a third and fourth actually so you can see fifth and sixth and tenth fifth and sixth and tenth and though they have a legs on the third and fourth but they they are not useful and also they have a tiny hook like a structures it's called as a crotchets and that's useful for actually uh, adhering to the surfaces very tight so they don't fall down so as far as the lab or uh, larvae is concerned they are uh, called as a caterpillars caterpillars are nothing but eating machines they are erusiform and highly phytophagous economically very very important because they are the serious pest of the crops they have a well developed segments like three thoracic and ten abdominal segments and uh, the antenna is very very small the antenna is very very small and it's like a bristle mouth parts are extremely developed extraordinarily developed and the mandibulate mouth parts is present in all the larvae with the chewing and biting kind and some they have a spinneret which is useful for spinning the cocoon for pupation and the legs they have segmented legs in each thoracic region three pairs of legs and uh, because they are segmented we call them as a pro legs true legs we call them as a true legs and the pro legs are always pro legs are fleshy kind of extensions which are present in third fourth fifth sixth and tenth abdominal segments sometimes sometimes some of the pro legs are absent that is the reason we call them as semi loopers or loopers semi looper means third and fourth pairs of abdominal legs are absent or not working that is the reason when it walks when it goes it looks like a loop because third and fourth abdominal pro legs are absent or not present or not working they also have a wonderful mechanism uh, called crotchets a hook like mechanism so that it can catch hold of the surfaces nicely so that it will not fall down the pupa pupa are usually edicticus uh, object and usually pupation is done in the cocoons as far as the moths are concerned but as far as the butterflies it is chrysalis you can see wonderful gold in color chrysalis pupa and this is the one uh, a moth pupa which is in cocoon so it can be uh, the pupation can be either in cocoons and our pupation as a chrysalis so you can see here adults are generally harmless except in two cases all the adults they are harmless because they just go and uh, probably they take some honey that's enough otherwise uh, how adults are very very safe and very very harmless but in case of citrus food, food sucking moth i just presented this picture because you may be saying these uh, usually all of our students will be collecting lot of these moths which they come to their room in the night time so this is a fruit sucking moth this is the only adult this is the only adult and also the castor semi looper akaya janta these are the only adults which actually damages the fruits 
All adults, they have a uh, siphoning type of mouth part, they just go and lick the honey. But whereas fruit sucking moth and also castor semilupar, so they actually do a lot of damage because they have a very well developed proboscis, which can actually pierce into the fruits. And the silk is the natural product of this order. Silk is the natural. So you can, I, I just tried to present some of the differences between the uh, butterflies and moths. So butterflies, butterflies, they have a bright colored, bright colored scales. Whereas the moths, they have a dull colored scale, generally, generally, but otherwise some of the moths are also really bright. Generally, butterflies, moths, will have a bright color scales on the surface of the wings. Whereas the moths are concerned, the scales are not brightly colored. So in the butterflies, the antenna is a slender filamentous antenna. They have a small bulbar club at the end. You can see here, so the small bulbar club like structure at the end. So as far as the moths are concerned, uh, they don't have a club-like ends. And in some times they have a comb-like or feathery-like antenna. Comb-like or feathery-like antenna. And wings, as I told you, that they have a bright colors. They have a bright colors. Bright colors because of the bright colored scales. In the moths, they have a dull colored scales. And similarly, the butterflies scales are very, very fine, very, very smooth. Whereas moths in the moths, they have a larger scales, look like more dense and fluffy. That's the reason the moment you touch the moth, especially you'll find, you'll feel really the scales and also all, all these scales will attach to your finger. But as far as the butterflies, you can just catch hold. But you feel like a very, very fine scales and also very smooth scales. So the wing coupling mechanism is amplexiform in case of butterflies, frenulum and retinoculum type in case of moths. The butterfly pupa is chrysalis and the moth pupa is cocoon. Body structure is slender and smoother in abdomen, whereas the body structure is very, very fat and furry bodies in case of moths. Butterflies, they are very active in the daytime. We call them as diurnal. In the case of moths, they are very, very active in the night time or in the dusk or dawn time. That's the reason we call them as nocturnal or crepuscular. And with this, we try to understand the general characteristic features, general characteristic features of the insects which are coming under the order Lepidoptera and also try to understand the differences between the butterflies and moths. The first and foremost important family is Noctidae. Very important, very, very important Noctidae. The common name is army worms or cutworms, army worms or cutworms. And you can see these insects commonly seen in most of the plants and very, very important, internationally very important. The first one is gram part oral, helicovarpa arimijana, tilgulomium patsopurgu and down. So gram part oral, helicovarpa arimijana is a, actually polyphagus, so the host range is so big. And I try to present the adult and also larvae here. The second one is tobacco caterpillars, food of 12 litre, pogaku latta guru and rubber guru and go and rubber guru and go and So third, fall, are, well, there are many numbers, but actually I try to present the most important commonly say. Fall army worm, fruits, food of fruji peda, fall army worm is just two years back, it has come to India. And very important, tirugulam and katar guru and Then the castor semi looper, akaya janta. Castors So anyhow, so these are the commonly seen uh, insects of the family Noctidae. And we call them as a army worms or cutworms. We call them as a army worms or cutworms. So, and also some more like uh, 
Brandy shoot and fruit borer areas vital and the paddy climbing, climbing cutworm within the separator and fruit sucking ma Udosema materna or Athres materna. Then uh, these are the, I try to present these two pictures because these are very commonly seen and you'll find this kind of moths which are coming to a room at night time. One moth with simple smart spot on the hind wing black color whereas another one is a covered structure. So these are the two different important taxonomic differences between these two. That's just for identification. This is the largest family. This is the largest family. And uh, antenna is always a filiform. Antenna is always a filiform. Maxillary palpi is normally not present, but the labial palpi is well developed. The four wings and hind wings, you can see the difference. Looking into the previous two slides, you can find the difference. The four wings are cryptic, dull colored, with many number of scales, generally simulating with the surroundings and cubatus appears to be four branch actually that's a wing venation structure larvae usually have five pairs of prolex five pairs in third fourth fifth sixth and the last but some are semi lupus because they their prolex in the third and fourth abdominal segments are not properly developed that is the reason when they move because of the absence of the prolex in the third and fourth abdominal segments. They look like a loop here. You can see here this is the castor semi looper. So majority feed on foliage and you can just imagine such a big larva eating. One castor semi looper can eat at least 10 castor leaves in a day. Just imagine such a dangerous pest. Highly polyphagous and they are nocturnal. And majorly they are, these larvae are also very, very busy in the night time. These larvae are also very, very busy in the night time compared to the day time. That is the reason in uh, generic terms, farmer terminology low, ascodopter literary, they come in the night time, they eat away all the plants and again they go into the soil during the day time. So this kind of based on this, a farmer language so they are actually active in the night time, even the larvae they are active in the night time and they feed on the foliage, they are the stem borers and they are also called as army worms and cut worms. And pupation is usually in the earthen cell in the soil. So all these larvae you have seen. So they pupate in the soil. They eat the plant material foliage during the night time, some in the day time as well. They are busy in eating they are because they are the eating machines. So they are busy in the eating all the foliage during the night time. Then they go after attaining fifth or sixth instar stage and finally they go into the final mode for pupation into the soil. So they go to the soil and they pupate in the soil. So the adults they have tympanal the organs at the base of the abdomen and uh, some, all the adults, they are not harmful but adult like this fruit sucking moth, fruit sucking moth. So because they have a highly developed proboscis here. So only the fruit sucking moth and also of course the castus semilupar is also, the, some of these adults are uh, uh, causing damage. But otherwise, the adults are not harmful. But the larvae is really harmful because they are the eating machines. They eat anything. They are highly phallophagous. They grow in a very, very bigger size. Unbelievable. They grow almost like our finger size. Just imagine that how much food they are eating. Very, very dangerous to the agriculture. That is the reason we focus more on today. And almost all these noctids are polyphagous except the castor semilopar. They'll, and also the citrus fruit sucking moth, but all other things like helco or passport of uh, they are polyphagous. They, they eat as many as almost 100 types of crops. Very important. 
The second one is uh, Lymantridae. The second order is Lymantridae. Lymantridae is Kazakh moths or Gypsy moths. I try to present some of the important insects coming under the family Lymantridae. Kazakh moths or Gypsy moth. So these are the adults. You find these adults actually in the room sometimes. And these are the larva. Let's see the bunches of hairs. I think these hairs are really poisonous. That's the reason we are afraid to touch this kind of Kasatman larvae. They are highly poisonous hairs. A many number of hairs in every thoracic and abdominal segments and also on the head. Lymantria means destroyer, defoliated. They are the destroyers. They are the destroyers. And the moths, they do not feed as the proboscis is uh, rudimentary. The moths are uh, medium sized, dull colored, nocturnal moths. Antenna is uh, bipectinate in males and pectinate in females. So it's a sexual dimorphism. Antenna is bipectinate in males. It's very common. That's what we have discussed when we discuss about the antenna. Antenna is bigger in size and highly developed in case of males because the males has to smell the pheromones released by the females. That is the reason male antenna is always a bipectinate. Uh, in this case, it's bipectinate and very well developed and the longer in size. Generally, in all the insects, the male antenna is bigger in size, very well developed. In this case, the male antenna is bipectinate and the female antenna is pectinate. So the wing venation is just like uh, not today. And another important thing is the adults will have a, a tough haze on the anal segments. A tough, tough haze, the bunch of haze. So if you just look into the last abdominal segments near the anus, so you the, these insects will have a tough, tough haze. And the, that's we call them as an anal tough haze. So generally what they will do at the time of laying the eggs, so over the eggs, they leave all these heads to protect the eggs from the enemies. The caterpillars are densely hairy. You have seen in the previous slide also, the caterpillars are densely hairy and the hairs are also sharp. And the hair pattern is different from the species to species, but however, they have a very, very long hairs and the bunches at various abdominal and thoracic segments, including even the head. head. So you can see here. So they are, the, the larvae are uh, really scary. So they look like a demons. And uh, they have a thick, compact uh, dorsal top. That's what I told you in the, every segment of the body. They have a tough, tough hairs, long hairs. Adults will have a anal hairs, whereas the larvae will have a hair on every segment. Osmotoria is uh, present on 6th or 7th abdominal segment. It's a bulge kind of structure. And pupation uh, takes place in cocoon above the ground. And uh, this is a very typical, you can see here, the antenna, the long hairs and they have some kind of patterns as well as the various abdominal thoracic segments. Very, very scary. Some of these larvae, Tasak moth larvae are very, very scary. And you can as well see some of these important Tasak moths. This is Ziproctis petrina. And uh, this is a hairy caterpillar on fruit trees. This is very, very common. You will be seeing these larvae normally. This is a hairy caterpillar on fruit trees and castor and pulses. You practice fraterna, and this is you practice scintillance. And these things are present all over, world over. There's very, very important pest world over. And the gypsy moss, of course, you'll be seeing the gypsy moss also. I want to disperse. And the white color is the male, and the dark color is the female. And uh, uh, this is actually female. This is actually female. Uh, this is actually female, and this is actually male. Yeah, the dark one is male and the light color is female. And you can see here in the male, the antenna is bipectinate and here the antenna is simple. Because it's male, 
so it needs to smell the chemical pheromones released by the females so it has a highly developed antenna the black color one is male and the white one is female so very important uh, family limantide is a very commonly seen these hairy caterpillars on fruit trees castor and pulses and many other crops and the gypsy moth is a very very dangerous pest across the globe across the globe so with this we will uh, stop for this class and we will continue the class uh, tomorrow uh, with other families as well so yeah so with this we complete this class and tomorrow we will uh, Uh, do the other. We will try to discuss and uh, see some of the important pictures of the insects coming in our other family.